Hi guys, in this lesson I'm gonna go over how you can solo over a blues and F with the arpeggios of the chord progression. My approach in this lesson is pretty much the same as what I used in the lesson I did almost a year ago on the B flat blues. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over the chords in the 12-bar blues, and um, I'm going to give you, uh, in one position, the arpeggios for uh, the chords that you need, um, and then I'm going to talk about how you can uh, practice it, and uh, also how you can uh, make lines with the, those arpeggios, so that you can really uh, have the feeling that you're playing something that fits with the song and follows the harmony of the blues progression. Let's first uh, look at the 12-bar blues. So um, these are the chords. F7, B flat 7, F7, B flat 7, B diminished, F7, D7 altered, G minor 7, C7, and then F7, and C7 again, and then back to F. So now that we have the chords, uh, we can look a bit at the arpeggios that we need. Um, if you check the progression, the way I've written it out, you might notice that I've made some of the two fives that you normally come across in a, in a blues and F um, into just a dominant, because when you're playing on it, you can you can get away with just playing on that dominant, and that makes it a little bit simpler, and you're still going to get the basic harmonic movement that's uh, happening. Uh, so you're not really losing anything by just playing the, the 5 of the 2-5. Um, the next thing we need uh, would be the arpeggios. Uh, and I put them all in, uh, in this 6th position. Uh, and they're pretty much within the same range, so uh, they don't have... Um, they don't start on the root, because I'm trying to just cover the same area of the neck with as many chord tones as I can, because that's going to make it easier to make melodies with them. So um, let's just go over them. The first one's an F7. The next one's a B flat seven. Then you get a B diminished. Then D seven. Uh, G minor seven. And then C seven. So as you can tell, everything is within this region. Uh, I've written them out now so they're like one bar long, which means I'm playing eight notes per chord. Um, that's mostly because then it's going to be easier to just fit them, copy-paste them into the blues and practice them that way. Uh, it's very important that you practice your chords on the progressions where you need them, because then you can, you can hear them in action much better, I think. Uh, so let's uh, try and go over that. So once you've played the arpeggios a bit and you can play them through the progression like I just did, uh, the next thing you want to check out is probably uh, just to get started with playing a few different patterns in the arpeggios, like uh, or um, stuff like this. The, be the better you know your arpeggios and the more stuff you can play in them, uh, the easier it is to come up with good melodies because uh, the easier it's going to be to come up with whatever you hear uh, in your head when you're playing. So um, another exercise that you can do on the track itself, or on the progression itself, is to play the arpeggios, but then not change um, note, not go back to the beginning of the arpeggio in the position like I did in the first exercise, but uh, to try and connect and to try and continue the movement um, at the closest note in the next arpeggio. Uh, this is kind of similar to what I talked about in uh, my lesson on target notes. Um, and it's a very useful thing to have, in, have this in your system that you can change, uh, that you can oversee where the next arpeggio is and that you already know 
know in advance from the from this node on the one we're going to change and we're going to continue here so you have to sort of think ahead while you're playing and um, you anyway need to do that when you're playing music so uh, if you have that sort of uh, included in your exercises then you're much better off let's try and do that once <laughs> That's how a chorus <coughs> of this exercise will sound, and I think you can kind of hear some pla in some places that it works really well. That you can really hear now. Now we get the new uh, arpeggio, and now we get the, the new chord. The, the chords are changing. Um, so uh, for that, this is a really really good exercise. It's a bit tricky because you really do need to know your arpeggios quite well. Um, but you should do this. You should probably do this with scales too at some point just to get better at it, just to have have the freedom that if you have a melodic idea you're not bound down by the chord changes, you're um, you're just executing that that melodic idea and um, you don't have to worry too much about the chord changes because you already practiced that so that that's sort of in your system. Um, the next thing we should go over is probably um, some of the notes that you want to aim for when you start making lines because these are of course still exercises and you don't really want to play a solo that sounded like the one I just played. You want to play something that makes sense, has some interesting rhythm and uh, swings and sits in the groove and uh, doesn't sound like an exercise. Uh, and one way you want to practice that is actually by composing lines using the arpeggios. Um, and for that it can be a good idea to just have some notes, some target notes, that if you play those um, on the one of a chord, then you can really hear that this is the new chord, you're really presenting um, the sound of the chord by just hitting that one note at that one time which usually means that you're going to hit a note that wasn't in the chord or maybe not even in the scale uh, in the previous bar. So the target notes that I chose for um, for this progression are in most cases just the third and the seventh because I find that they're the basis of uh, these chords, they're actually the basis of most chords in jazz harmony um, so you can get away with just using those and you don't have to worry too much about it once you get used to that uh, which is also nice because it makes it easy to practice of course uh, there are a few exceptions and I'm gonna go over that um, so if I play the target notes, so for the first chord 3rd and 7, A and E flat for the B flat 7, A flat and D and of course back to the A and the E flat and in the 5th bar back to the A flat and the D and then on the B diminished uh, since the essence of the B diminished would sort of still be the same chord it's just the root changing I actually just have 3 target notes and I'm adding the root which is this B as a target note and then on the F7 we're back on the 3rd and 7th on the D7, also 3rd and 7, but I'm playing it here, mostly just to keep it in the position because it makes more sense to have them where we're actually playing the arpeggio, even though you might think of it up here. I played the voicing up there in the beginning, but for this it works better to have them here. G minor, 3rd and 7, B flat, F, and C7. Also B flat and E, uh, and then back to F and back to C7. So essentially for all chords except one I'm just playing the third and the seventh as target notes now. So those are the notes that I want to hit. Uh, just to demonstrate what I'm uh, talking about is uh, uh, let's just take the change of uh, F7 going to B flat 7 and uh, so I'm gonna play I'm gonna try and make a few lines that use the arpeggio of the F7 and sort of logically resolve to the A flat on the B flat 7 and then you can hear how clear the lines are so uh, that will be something like 
So if I play it like that, you can kind of hear this change happening all the time because I'm always playing a phrase that's pointing towards this. So what I'm practicing is, I mean, I'm playing the arpeggio and I'm playing those notes so that they're the right uh, notes, but I'm also practicing making melodies that I think make sense towards this note. Because one thing is that you're playing the right notes. Another thing is that actually melodically what you're playing uh, is of enough quality. You can also just sort of play the notes at random, but it makes of course more sense if you actually play a melody. Uh, and you need to work on that aspect of improvising as well, of course. So if you use this approach on the other course too, so you have all the changes that you need. So you practice going from G7 to G minor and from G minor to C7 just to and finding the notes that you want to hit. As you can tell, uh, so you're gonna probably always want to hit the notes that are if possible not in the previous chord at least and also maybe not in the previous scale um, so if you're playing from G minor to C then this note is going to stay the same so that's not the most clear target note and it's probably clearer to just start out with this one once you start having the ability to play the arpeggios and hit those notes you can always open it up and just try to play more melodic statements and just try to be the judge of if you can hear the chord change yourself because training your ears to, to judge that is part of learning how to improvise as well. Um, yeah, so you need to go over this so you have a few progressions or small movements that you need to check out and then you just start playing on the blues uh, as a whole using this. Uh, if I do that then that would be something like this. So that's just a solo only using the arpeggios but still trying to make, make a musical statement out of it and just trying to make simple, I mean fairly simple melodies, there are no extensions involved and no alterations or anything like that. It's just the basic chord and just trying to make some melodies with it. Really sort of the core of the progression um, because I find that that's the, that's the best way to really, really learn a song and to learn something like a, a blues you really need to know the, 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 fun, the fundamentals of the progression and I think this is a good way to do that. So that was a few examples and uh, some arpeggios and some exercises uh, on how you can work on improvising on a blues in F using the arpeggios. Um, I find this to be probably one of the best approaches to, 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 to work on a progression like this and to really clearly spell it out and make sure that you can really hear melodies on the progression. Uh, so for that, um, I hope that you can use it. Uh, if you like this lesson, then uh, feel free to like it here on YouTube, and you can of course also uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Um, if you have any comments or suggestions, then uh, feel free to leave uh, a comment here on uh, on the video, uh, or you can also uh, connect with me on uh, Google Plus, uh, on uh, Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook, and get in touch with me, with me there. Um, I will be very happy to hear from you guys if you have anything, anything that you want to say that I should do differently or requests for a lesson or an idea for a topic. Um, for the rest, uh, if you want to download the arpeggios and uh, the exercises that I went over here, you can go to my website uh, and you can download a PDF there. Uh, there you can also subscribe to my newsletter. Uh, and. Um, around the time when I'm gonna put up this lesson I'm gonna be working on also having some more lessons that are not uh, available on YouTube but uh, which which will be available uh, at my website and you can check those out too they're gonna be extensions of uh, what I'm doing here so some more uh, etudes and uh, some written solos 
uh, on something like a blues and F, uh, and discussing how uh, how I wrote it, what I'm thinking when I'm making lines like this, and uh, how I come up with it. So um, that's it for this week. Um, until next week, and thank you for watching.